Hello everyone and welcome back to a new video of the Legolas Studios and today at the stage we have Crotacol with us So before the video starts just to let you know you have the instructions in the description you also have a playlist with all the other dark hunts I review and um, we have my Instagram and my Facebook page and all that social media stuff. I also put the music this time at the description. So take a look at the description and if you like this, comment, like, and subscribe. And okay, let's start with the show. So according to the backstory, Karate Call is the result of an experiment performed by Makuta Teradax where he exposed a Karate to the same substance that he used to transform Krana into Krana Call. The result was a being of much higher intelligence than, than the average Krata which, with a wider array of powers. So Teradas decided to construct a armor for him which included a number of unique weapons. So later on he decided to escape from Teradax service and was soon recruited by the Dark Hunters. But however Krana Call was such a rebel that he usually ignore the mission's objectives in, uh, in order to just accomplish his own uh, personal profit. And as a punishment for this habit, the Shadow One once permitted Vesok to attack him and damage his armor. Later on, when the Piraka deserted from the organization, Katakal joined Amphibax and Centrax in order to track down the Piraka. And after the sinking of Voyanui, the team returned to Dina and later on relocated to Sia at the order of the Shadow One. And then when the Maturan universe was critically damaged in the Battle of Barra Magna, Krata Call immigrated to Spears Magna as the other as the other Dark Hunters. And yeah, he doesn't has such a long backstory. He doesn't know really much about him. And talking about his ability and traits, Krata Call has extremely high intelligence and he's very ambitious and he's very ambitious but is also very known to be stubborn and rebellious. He has a degree of elemental control over shadow, water and fire, along with armor, glory and more durable than standard Rakshi armor. Katakal's armor is fit with various blades, teeth and claws can use at close range combat. He also wields both with a double bladed sword, chin chin, and a Kanoka launcher. I might call them from the disc because I have them in a box and I don't remember where I put them all but if I find one I'm gonna put that on him but I mean that's not important and he was created by Morgan Alfred I don't know how to say his name known as Makuta Nuba Call on BC Power for the Lego magazine Dark Hunter Blink Hunters and was given a storyline rule and the place in the book Bionicle Dark Hunters by Greg Fosti and he appears in Bionicle Dark Hunters um, but when you call it Encyclopedia Updated, as many other Dark Hunters. So, going on with review, we have him. I'm gonna compare him. I'm not gonna take much about when you call this time. So I'm just gonna compare him with a standard Anika size. We're gonna take Tahu Mystica this time. It's my sister's, but I took it from here. <laughs> no. Okay. Uh, so comparing, he is basically, basically, um, yeah, uh, to uh, Nika build as tall as Nika build. If we don't count the wings, of course. Yeah, that's it. And yeah, going on with the set itself, um, I pretty much like it. Uh, there are some few issues I don't like and it's one of the most important for me and it's stability you know when you build him it's gonna fall back and forward and I don't really like that but I think nobody likes that and uh, yeah the wings yeah they can also cause some trouble but I mean it's normal the way as they build as they are the way they are built so I mean they think the major problem of Creator Call is the legs because 
this here doesn't allow you to make it like this movement to the side and that's gonna cause you that you can't really pose him because it doesn't have like a big range for stable for placing the legs so you cannot really you can do this but I mean it's not gonna look good so that's a bad thing about him the good thing though is the tail helps you actually to give him to pose him because if you really like you gotta take your time to pose him but if you like place the tail like this it's not gonna be that hard but it's gonna be tricky even though but it's gonna be a bit easier though so that's a good thing the tail really helps with the with the with the stability so then according to the hands um, I think they are yeah decently they are not like very very there's not some they're not very you know unique they're not very they're not very hard to make both the legs and the arms they're the kind of basic I think the arms are cool because you can really move the fingers so that's a big point and you have the weapon at this side you can change this weapon by one of these gloves here I'm gonna just show it so you can have both normal hands see and you can just have a normal hand here if you want and you can put the weapon here on the back so you can really and you can even move it side to side it's gonna be, get a bit in the wave sometimes but you know it's nice to have somewhere to ah, damn, <laughs> to place the weapon because you sometimes have so many weapons on your figure and you just want to maybe in the stop motion or just to make photos for telling a story just for displaying them you usually don't have a place just to store the weapons like in the movie they have sometimes the weapons in the back or but I mean this one has a place to store the weapons so that's a nice thing so here we have also this like thing like hands here but I mean I think they're more just like the overall the armor is not something you have to move then we have the wings and this is a cool thing about the wings you can actually fold them in and you can do this and it's not gonna fall off and down so that's pretty good I really like the wings on this one I think they really worked with a great mechanism as you see the mechanism is this way so when you fold this down it's gonna follow along and it's not gonna and this is also steady enough not like going down up and down when you you smooth the figure we also have the tail here and it has this kind of gap here I don't like but yeah it's you can accept it it's not like something it's not that bad either but I mean it wouldn't be nice if it was a little bit closer and more compact I think it would be better the tail is pretty thick actually <laughs> more than and yeah, from the back he has a great view. So that's the main features. The mobility is, as I say, I didn't like the one in the legs. I actually enjoyed building him, but what I'm not liking now, because I just like recently built him, is the stability of the set. That's a bad thing. But I mean, you have at least the tails and it really helps you. It's not really like Seeker that will fall all the time more easily. The bad thing is, you know, here you cannot move them this way, but you can accept that. But I mean, overall, it, the set is pretty nice actually. So I will recommend you to build him. He has a postable head too. That's nice because some of Dark Hunters doesn't have that. It's nice to be able to move the head. Don't remember, I think it was the last one. Yeah, it was Dweller with the head. So 
such a poseable head, it can only move it back and forward, and that's not that nice because it's nice to have a head mobility. I mean, I'll, and overall, you think about stop motion because I, you know, I make a lot of stop motion, and also, but I mean, this also relates to if you're gonna make photos and that kind of stuff. So, there are some miniature things I made of him. It's just basically this, what has to be in black, and some black pieces that I have put on silver, but you don't really like, you don't really notice. Maybe the most noticeable thing is the blade here. It should be red, it should be another blade here. But I mean, it's not something you really notice. And yeah, as I said, I do enjoy him because he has much uh, possibility, not stability. That's a bad thing, but I mean, you can really pose him and you can make cool move, cool, cool poses like this. And the wings extended, or you can put in uh, like the fold and they also have the tail. So you can really like make nice battle scene with this one. Like, I think it's gonna try it. Like this, and he comes down with his shield. Then, yeah, making this possible, making this pose is pretty cool. And then you gotta put the tail so it doesn't fall, and I think it's gonna fall even though. But, you no, know, it it's a nice pose here. Like, I do like it. And you can maybe, if you have something to a stand or something like that, you gotta make him, you can make him fly like this. And yeah, it's a pretty cool pose because this has much possibility, so if I recommend building him, yes, I definitely recommend building him. But, you know, I recommend building every dog hunter because you can have a nice experience building them, even though you're not gonna have them, but I mean, I will really recommend you just to go through all the counters, even if you have destroyed the old you build, but just try to build like every one of them. I mean, it's really nice because you have been really having a great experience because it's not you get a little bit away if you don't have like really much mock experience or something, or yeah, making mocks in general. You will really enjoy making this because you're gonna learn a lot of how they are, the structure, really what you're gonna learn more it's about how to build with uh, the classic, the more classic Bawani called parts before the Ainaika era, before the Ainaika builds came so you're gonna really learn how the basics and how to make uh, more like pre Ainaika stylish builds which are very nice too. So, and uh, yeah, I think that was basically everything for today. So before I leave you guys, I just want to, to ask you if you would like also to see, I mean, I might can't build all dog counters by now because there was, I'm getting to a point that I'm missing very much pieces, build some of them. And basically it's, biggest problem is the color scheme because some of the dark counters use like uh, many reds I mean maybe one used like four or six uh, red rakshi food parts and you know I don't have so much as many rakshis S and, or maybe like many visuac parts and you know maybe have a lack of pieces in that sense. So I'm also gonna start maybe building some creatures, you know, from like the Archie mole, the, the proto wolf, I think, or maybe, you know, the Tarakawa stylish uh, mocks they also made. They are pretty cool too, and that nobody has reviewed yet. So might make them and uh, yeah, I reviewed them because it's nice to just learn a lot of the Bionicle trivia that is not very common because it doesn't come um, with the the general story that's shown. You have to read the books and that kind of stuff. So it's really nice to make those 
says because you really learn a lot. I really learn a lot and really enjoy making this video. So that's what what I wanted to say before this video ends. So if you enjoy it, give it a thumbs up, comment, subscribe, and you know that kind of things. So see you next video, guys. Bye bye.